Hello users. Today, let's unbox and compare Maniac Mansion by Lucasfilm Games. A point and click adventure game which introduced the Scum Engine in 1987. First, let's take a look at the box. This is the Amiga version, published in 1989. The game is about a teenage student and his friends on their effort to rescue his girlfriend from Dr. Fred, an old scientist gone mad under the control of a sentinel meteor, which crashed by his mansion. In order to succeed, the kids will have to reason with the mansion's zany inhabitants and overcome many difficult, yet very funny situations. Let's open the box and see what's inside. The Amiga version comes on two unprotected 3.5-inch discs, which means that it can easily be backed up and installed to hard disk. Maniac Mansion's copy protection is code-based, so you will need this red filter and the codebook. Early in the game you will have to enter a four-digit code in order to disarm a security doors alarm located inside the mansion. If you get it wrong three times you will lose the game, as the alarm actually triggers a nuclear bomb. The red letters used to foil photocopying disappear when looking through the filter, so you can easily find the correct combination to open the door and proceed with the game. This is the manual, providing loading and gameplay instructions. Before starting the game, you'll need to pick three kids for your team, each having different talents and weaknesses, which means that the game can be completed in many ways, depending on your choice. Although keyboard shortcuts are available, Maniac Mansion is truly point and click. So it can be finished by just using the mouse without needing or being able to type any commands. Finally, there's a poster of the university's bulletin board which adds to the immersion by making you feel like a teenage student living in the game's world.
The messages pinned on the board are quite humorous, but they're also full of useful hints. Let's take a final glimpse at the box and its contents. Maniac Mansion's development started in 1985 by Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick. It was completed two years later, in 1987 when the game was released for the Commodore 64 and Apple II. The developers decided to turn it into an adventure game after playing Sierra's pioneering King's Quest. Even though King's Quest was the first animated graphics adventure game, it still relied on text input by the player similarly to text adventures of the era. So, the developers took Sierra's idea one step further by designing a pure point and click system, in which control is achieved by simply choosing from a set of commands and pairing them with target graphical objects on screen. Although programming started on the Commodore 64 using 6502 assembly, due to the game's complexity the development of a game engine quickly became a necessity. Thus the script creation utility for Maniac Mansion, or SCUM, was born. With SCUM, the interpreter was to be ported to the various mainstream computers of the era. While the games themselves would be platform-independent written for SCUM scripting, graphics and sound components. This made game development and porting considerably easier. So, Scum kept getting improved in the following years and was used to develop many successful Lucasfilm titles. Maniac Mansion's story and characters were inspired by comics and teenager horror movies of the time. Holy old Jesus! Does it have to be human? Beep me! Does it have to be mine? Beep me! Where am I supposed to get it? Beep me see. The mansion is modeled after the Skywalker Ranch's main house, including some of its actual rooms. In 1990, a sitcom by the same name, run for three seasons in the United States and Canada which was loosely based on the game. While 1993 saw the launch of Day of the Tentacle. Maniac Mansion's long-awaited sequel. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not! This is the first time I've ever tried it on people! As mentioned, the game was released for the Commodore 64 and the Apple II in 1987. 
It featured very nice colorful graphics with big character sprites, scrolling and real-time gameplay events. The copy protection was disc-based, as opposed to the later 16-bit versions which used the alarm codes. The IBM PC version came out in 1988, looking almost identical to the original Commodore release. A port for the Nintendo Entertainment System was published during the same year in Japan, featuring nice graphics and sound. Though looking a bit different, because of the smaller cartoony characters and screen flipping instead of scrolling. The Atari ST and Amiga versions followed in 1989, sporting much improved graphics and sound while still retaining the original feel of the 8 bits. In addition, an improved second version of the IBM PC port was released, looking identical to the ST and the Amiga. Finally the English Nintendo port was published in 1990, and looked closer to the original compared to the previous Japanese release. Let's see the game's versions running side by side. Thank you. 
That was an excellent animated adventure, which set the standards for the point and click genre. Did you like it users? Until next time, here are some more videos for you.